Okay, so I'm excited um, to have everyone join us today for our first ever Ask an Inclux trainer, um, who we have the honor of uh, presenting with us today, Monica Harmon. Um, she is one of our several NCLEX trainers that the campaign has um, that was trained through NCSBN. Um, and so we really just want to take this time to highlight them as well as um, give the schools an opportunity just to ask any burning questions, get more information, whatever they really need as they prepare for this new NCLEX exam. Um, so I told her I wasn't going to take up too much time. I just wanted to welcome everyone, um, but I want to give her the floor and let her take it away. And then, of course, please feel free to ask as many questions as you can, because this is your opportunity just to have that peer to peer engagement with your colleagues. So, Monica, please take it away. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jasmine. I'm, I'm so excited. Um, many of you, we've been, been on these meetings um, month after month, probably a few years at this point. And so I'm just so excited for the opportunity to share uh, what I've learned um, as a trainer. I, I do want this to be um, engaging so that we have the back and forth, because I think the back and forth is where we really um, all learn as well. This NetGen NCLEX is new. I think all of, to all of us, it's scary. Um, but I think, you know, together we will uh, learn and we will grow as well. So uh, next slide, I'm Monica. You, you know me, I think, at this point from PA Action Coalition. So next slide, please. So I always like to start with a um, icebreaker. So um, I'm just going to ask everyone to name that tune, right? So if your life had a theme song, uh, what would it be and why? And I'm kind of asking this question uh, for a reason, but I'm just curious to hear. If you had a theme song, what would it, would it be and why? Um, it's so funny. I was just thinking about this the other day for a similar icebreaker, but my song is Ain't No Mountain High Enough because I think that it's about um, climbing, bringing people up that mountain with you and, um, you know, we can do anything if we put our minds to it, have some resilience and um, some supports. Absolutely. And <laughs> I'm looking in the chat. I'm seeing ain't no high enough as well. I'm seeing keep rising to the top. <laughs> it's a celebration. All right. Life is a highway. I don't know that one. All right. Oh, all the way up by Fat Joe. <laughs> yeah, it's one of my favorite songs, <laughs> by the way. Let's celebrate. All right. And I didn't tell you my song. And my song is I'm Coming Out by Diana Ross. Because it's like, all right, world, here I am. Right. <laughs> so thank you for indulging me. And I, and I think our, all of our songs reflects uh, really what we feel about nursing and what we want to see for the future of nursing. And while I think, oh, I would love, I see you, I see you, Danielle. I would love us to have a playlist for this group. <laughs> oh, optimistic. Absolutely. But I think um, as nurses and, and the work that we all engage in, you know, we meet once a month, we're all busy and we have many other meetings, we have many other um, things that we do. But I think at the root of all that we do is that we want to see the best for nursing our profession. And what better way to um, invest in the future of nursing, uh, whether it's our students at any level, with, whether it's in ourselves, either as educators or administrators or you know, whatever. So um, thank you all for indulging me with that um, song because it sounds like we're all on the same wavelength and I'm loving this. So next slide, please. And so just clearly, we want to I want to introduce what Next Gen um, NCLEX is supposed to be about. So hopefully I can dispel some myths hope to clarify, um, answer some questions, and then also um, point you to some um, National Council of State Boards of Nursing resources um, that will further help your understanding of what NCLEX, in Next Gen NCLEX is supposed to do. Next slide. So I wanna hear from you. What have you heard? And what have, when, when, when I ask about what have you heard, what is it um, about what you've heard that is now impacting the way you teach or the way you lead or the way you conduct um, every aspect of your professional life? 
And I know these are loaded questions, but I'm ready for the answers. Does anyone want to share or you can put it in the chat? Oh, yep, someone has okay. a hand raised, Jennifer. So we have really kind of flipped the classrooms, um, you know, posting information for students to read, review, and then have that information ahead of time so that when they come to class, then we're either doing simulation or case studies, um, but various flipped classroom activities. Yeah, thank you for sharing, Jennifer. I think I met, oh, let me see. That says um, better clarification for the exam taker, more challenging for faculty incorporate for sure. Um, I've met with um, some faculty from FAMU, um, and I don't see Dr. Johnson on, but um, yesterday, and that was one of the comments that the faculty said is that, oh, the students said, well, wait a minute, are you going to give us partial credit like the new NCLEXs, you know, because before we didn't always give you that. You either had to know it or you didn't. So that's definitely a change. As well, let me see. Um, oh, I see Dr. DeWitty, some concerns about HBCU schools and their future success um, with NCLEX pass rates, absolutely. Um, and just trying to get that word out for all available resources, for sure. Um, I think we all know um, all of the schools are, are very stressed um, about this. Everyone knows this, the studies have shown, and I, I think Dr. DeWitty, certainly from AACN, that when the NCLEX changes, um, pass rates do go down. So that's a real, real challenge for all of us. Oh, I see desire for more partial credit. Yep, and that, that came out clear with FAMU. I'm um, also with Lincoln in Pennsylvania where I am as well. Um, and just more clarification for sure. Um, so it's, it's definitely an interesting time. I always say when it's, when it's a challenge, it's an opportunity for us to do great things. So next slide. Mm -hmm. All right, so I just had some, um, I try to do this in the format of, format of questions and answers, but certainly if I don't get to any questions that you have, certainly jump in. If there's any comments you may have um, about what we're talking about at the moment, feel free. Like I said, this is a sharing session, but um, you know me, if it's not broke, why are we trying to fix it? Um, why are the boards trying to change NCLEX? I thought it was a good thing, right? We're, we're getting our, we have a rhythm. We're able to teach our classes. Our students are passing. They're going on to be great professionals. But next slide. Um, whether you are aware or not, um, NCSBN is always making sure that whatever is on the NCLEX is actually measuring um, what new to practice nurses, entry level nurses need um, in order that we're measuring that they have enough foundational knowledge, enough skills, um, all to be uh, safe practitioners wherever they practice, despite their academic background. Um, we still have that debate about the access points uh, for nurses and what it should be. Um, we know about the 80% BSN by 2020. We have not reached that at all. Um, so you can either be an LPN, an associate degree nurse, a diploma, or a baccalaureate um, degree nurse. And with that baccalaureate, we all know it's either traditional or um, an accelerated or secondary BSN as well. So every three years, um, the National Council State Board of Nursing um, does conduct practice analyses to evaluate the knowledge, skills, and abilities needed for entry-level practice. And they also um, evaluate the validity of the test plan um, for licensure examinations because we have to make sure that whatever we're testing for, that it actually shows um, what our grads have learned, but then also it helps employers know that okay, this registered nurse, this licensed practical nurse, this licensed vocational nurse, 
all that your school has said that they will um, experience in your program is what will make them ready to be practice level ready when they get out. Um, also, because of these analyses, we've seen recently changes in healthcare that our exams and I think even education um, hasn't always been ready to address. So certainly our patients are sicker um, these days and not only are they sicker, but they come with more than one chronic condition as well. So when they, when they do present um, at whatever healthcare center they come to, um, this poses a, a greater, uh, greater sense of challenges as well. So I knew if I always had that respiratory patient, I knew that when they came in, if it was a patient with cystic fibrosis, I knew they were going to be on triple antibiotics. So I had to make sure I had all of the pumps ready. But now that that patient with cystic fibrosis may have heart disease, they may have, you know, other conditions that I have to now consider. It's not just one disease. Um, also, clinical judgment because of these acutely, more acutely ill um, clients. Now your judgment is different, right? You're not just doing the same old, same old. It's not a cookie cutter if you work with a certain population. Delegation now, because if these um, patients are sicker, then who do I really delegate tax to? And is it appropriate? And then do I even have the staff to do this? And of course, um, impacts decision-making. And uh, we all know that nurses, and we might be a little biased with this, but nurses are responsible um, for making most of the judgments and decisions in healthcare. It's because of our assessments that others, health professionals can um, do their jobs as well. And so now we have newly licensed nurses who are required um, to make these complex decisions about patients, but they may not have the knowledge or um, the ability to make these decisions. I mean, this is critical for um, the health of the population and is critical, I think, um, you know, for, for our patients as well and for our profession. Next slide. Mm -hmm. So another question I had is, well, then how did, you know, NCSBN decide to change the NCLEX? So I got the answer on the next slide. Um, I did a little digging. So historically, uh, in 2009, I'll give you a bit of a timeline, NCSBN reviewed several research reports. Um, they engaged in professional discussions with nursing experts. And some of those discussions may, be, may have been with some of you on this uh, call, but they asked about the importance of clinical judgment. And I'll tell you why clinical judgment um, was, was the, the main question in nursing. And so what they found is that 50% of entry-level nurses were involved in practice areas. So that's half of the new nurses. They found that 65%, so almost two-thirds of entry-level nurses, um, errors were related to poor clinical decision-making. And only 20%, that's a fifth of employers, were satisfied with, with the decision-making abilities of entry-level nurses. I'm just going to let those numbers sit with you a bit. I don't know about you. I would be panicked too if I was NCSBN and saw that. Um, 2012 to 2014, um, there were two uh, landmark studies, and I believe I've sent that in the packet to be sent out later. Um, but these studies um, provided evidence, showed support um, for the importance of clinical judgment in entry-level nursing. And what it found, what they both found was that clinical judgment problem solving, critical thinking, professional communication, and active listening were uh, the top five high priority skills um, that these experts said entry-level nurses must have. And if you um, take this apart a little bit more, if you look at clinical judgment, problem solving and critical thinking are key to clinical judgment in that, that skill. Next slide. In 2017, there was the RN Knowledge Survey. Um, and so what this survey looked at was that clinical judgment was rated between important and critically important by newly licensed RNs, RN educators, 
are in supervisors and across the um, facility categories of hospitals, long-term care, community-based care, and other care settings, right? And so this was looking at new grads. This was looking at those who teach the new grads, looked at those who are working uh, with the new grads, supervise them, manage, you know, all of these things, but also looked at different settings. And we said, okay, clinical judgment is it. And then in 2018, um, I know, I don't think we have anyone that teaches LPNs, LVNs, but we saw the same thing um, when we did a practice, well, not we, when NCSBN did a practice analysis um, for the entry-level practical nurse as well. Next slide. So I had a question about the standards um, that NCSBN uses when developing a new NCLEX, right? Because we said, okay, you do this research every three years. Um, it just, I just kind of went through a rabbit hole, if you will, with this. And so next slide. Um, what we found is that, um, and what I found was that NCSBN still conducts, still continues um, to look at studies to support the development of NCLEX. Um, next-gen NCLEX, which I think is um, amazing that they took this much detail and this much time, and they're still um, having these studies, but also um, looking at current items and um, documenting the validity of these items that measure clinical judgment. And so when we talk about validity, it is um, how the extent to which clinical judgment can be measured. Um, there's also numerous item writing panels um, which are comprised of nurse faculty um, who write these items and they have to align them um, with the nursing, um, the NCSBN clinical judgment measurement model. And then also um, I like this uh, consensus, if you will, of nursing experts. So it's nursing faculty, clinical educators, clinicians, um, and numerous uh, committees um, of these experts who um, review the items to ensure um, that they are valid, indeed valid. Next slide. And then I had the question of, well, what is the NCSBN clinical judgment measurement model, right? Like, what is this? How is this applied? I had a lot of questions. So next slide. So um, what happened was, again, another extensive uh, literature review. And I love this because this is what we teach our students to do, right? Get the evidence. Um, look at different areas. So it was not just nursing, but it was also decision theory and also testing. Um, and then looking at um, the data that came from these reviews, then there was this assessment framework, which was the NCSBN clinical um, judgment measurement model. And this model is a framework, if you will, um, that was designed for and specific to testing. So it's not, it shouldn't um, change what you're teaching in the classroom. Like it doesn't go against nursing theory, you know, nursing process or other um, evidence-based theories that you use, but it's just a framework to help you then test um, the knowledge that you're using um, in class, right? So we're helping our students really, um, I think, to better synthesize and analyze um, the data so that they make the right decisions, um, you know, and prioritize correctly. So um, if you're using any other kind of pedagogy, andragogy, um, clinical judgment, simulation theory, again, this model does not compete, but it really complements what you are teaching. Um, and, and it also helps that it's um, systematic, it's evidence-based, um, and it helps our students to demonstrate at least minimal competence um, with, with respect to clinical judgment and decision-making. Remember, that's the key, clinical judgment and decision-making. Next slide. Then I wondered, all right, well, how is this model applied then to next-gen NCLEX? So next slide. And what I love is that um, this model, when I, as I did more research, is that it really can be applied to any clinical scenario um, so if you're thinking about ethics, legal rights, responsibility, um, delegation, community health, you know, coalition building, all of the things that um, NCLEX didn't always teach, I mean, they always um, have one exam, we can now use this, this framework um, when we're developing questions for students. 
Um, research is still ongoing for sure. Um, and it has been ongoing since 2017. And we do know um, that the new um, next-gen NCLEX will be, will be available effective April 1st. So this is why we're talking about this now. Next slide. So then, of course, I, you know, as an educator, I want to make sure that exams are rigorous. So that was a question that I had, you know, so is next-gen um, rigorous? And I can tell you it is. Next slide. And I can tell you why it is. Um, and that is that um, the, the same reliability, the same accuracy that we come to, we have come to expect from NCLEX, we um, will still see. And that's because of the consensus of experts. It's because um, faculty are writing um, these questions. And, and that's coming up in the slide, but NCSBN um, is always looking for item writers. So that's you know, a shameless plug um, for you to do so. Um, but also, I think you know, NCLEX has been known as the standard um, of excellence in how we regulate nursing practice, right? Um, and I think the key is, two keys, is really how safe will the public be, but also um, we're meeting um, the health pop population health needs too as well. And so I think this new exam um, will do this, uh, particularly um, with different types of questions. So the drag down, um, the partial credit, which is giving our students credit for what they do know, right? Whereas before it's kind of either you know it or you don't, but this is actually um, looking more at, you know, what our students come to the table with as well. The so next slide. So you're like me, okay, how do I prepare? my students, I think it's the holy grail, if you will, of our NCLEX pass rates, whether or not our programs continue right, without scrutiny too much. Thank you. <laughs> so um, cl this clinical judgment model um, can be incorporated into your curriculum from the beginning to the end and everywhere in between. Um, it has been shown that this clinical judgment measurement can be used um, in simulation labs, it can be used in didactic, um, you know, in the lecture hall, um, clinical rotations for post-conference. Um, it can be used to help write exam items. Um, there is um, a newsletter, which I think I did send um, to be sent out um, from 2019. It has a tool that helps you to develop um, these assessments for students as well. And um, NCSBN has um, begun to provide education to faculty. Um, you know, again, I was one of the 15 trainers um, that were trained, but there are many more. And I, I just put the shameless plug in here um, for NCSBN and they're not paying me and I'm, I don't do any item writing, but I do plan to volunteer um, to apply to do so. I understand they send you to Chicago. So I'm, I'm all for Chicago, I love that city. Um, as well, and you just spend some time um, learning how to write items and learning how to write um, answer choices. And so that's just a skill that I think all of us, you know, you can get better at and why not. Um, but, um, and it's also, you have a chance to work with faculty. Um, and I think for me, especially as a public health nurse, one of the things I um, always struggled with is the material that I taught um, didn't always appear in NCLEX. And so that was a struggle. Um, for me, because I think all that I teach helps our um, students to be better nurses, right? Because you think about where people come from, you think about all of the roles they have in life, um, you think about all of those determinants of health that we call social determinants of health now, but we have to incorporate that into our care. So I think this is a way we can get more um, nurses from different backgrounds to write item questions, and I think we can get a more um, representative test of knowledge as well, right? It's, you know, the test is only as good as who's writing it. Um, also, the testing companies, so I've seen a number of them now um, offer next-gen, um, they incorporate next-gen items in um, their test preparation products. I won't name any of them, um, but you know the regular ones as well. And then of course, um, you know, as educators, just keeping abreast of what is going on up to the minute, 
um, details from NCSBN. So I did put a link here um, to, to subscribe to the mailing list as well for um, next gen NCLEX. And I will tell you, they don't overwhelm your um, inbox, I promise. <laughs> Next slide, please. So how was the um, score? How was the test scored? Um, because that was a big thing for me as well, what some of the changes are. Next slide. Mm -hmm. So I like it um, because it's actually um, broadens, if you will, the current um, scoring model. So right now, um, NCLEX items are what we call dichotomous models, so either we scored all correct or they're all incorrect. It's all or nothing. They give you no partial credit. With the new exam, you, um, you now are allowed partial score items um, with multiple points. So the students love that. When they saw that, they were like, yes, <laughs> give me some partial points. Um, also, what I like is that um, these items now, these new test items, they can be administered individually. So what I mean by that, that there are different um, test types, response types as well. So there's drag and drop. There's the multiple um, response. They have a select all that apply. You can highlight. Um, it's almost like you can see unfolding case studies. You can um, see models of patient, a patient and a patient in a room. And you can kind of look and see, okay, is this patient safe? And what tells you they're not safe? And what should the nurse look, at, look for first? Um, so I'm excited about that. Of course, that brings challenges, um, right, for us as educators, because, you know, how do you um, mimic the drag and response, the drag and drop, the multiple responses um, in your learning management systems, but also in your test management systems? Um, and that's something that I'm working on. I'm learning myself, um, too, because I know, for example, like, the learning management system canvas, you can use quizzes to do uh, some of this. Um, Blackboard has this as a similar mechanism. When you look at um, testing, I'm looking now um, into exam soft, because uh, that's some of the software that um, some of the schools I work with um, as well. Um, there may be other that I'm not thinking of at the moment, but those are, um, you know, again, they're challenges, but I think they're opportunities too. You know, after you teach a course a couple of times, you know, it kind of becomes second nature to you. But this is also, I think, a chance to breathe new life into your courses and also breathe new life in how you see the material as well, what you want your students to get out of it. Um, so I don't know. Um, but also, I, um, I have to say that the passing standard is still the same. We still have this um, panel of nursing subject matter experts um, who will score a minimally, a minimally competent candidate. And also um, nothing that is new is going should affect um, the passing standard. So fear not. Our students won't come out if they're registered or licensed. They won't come out any less competent. Right, when I think that was a big concern for me. Okay, next slide. So I have to pause because I don't like to talk a lot. Um, I like to hear what people are thinking. I always try to get the pulse of the room. So what tune are you singing now? What questions do you have? <laughs> Did your song change? <laughs> are you still coming out? Are you still optimistic? Are you still all the way up? I'm trying to think of some of the other songs. I should look at the chat. <laughs> oh, thank you, Dr. Stan. Yes, very good. So I didn't scare you. <laughs> All right. You know, I think over time, the more you hear what Next Gen does and how and what, what it is and what it does, mm -hmm. I think for me, it's not as scary as when I first heard it. And it's now you know, how do we support and help faculty to incorporate um, this type of learning um, and assessment? And how do we help the students be, get prepared? You know, it's just to me application at this point. I might be oversimplifying, but at first I was very nervous for it. Still nervous for the outcome, especially as we transition. Yeah. Um, and praying that that doesn't impact 
um, the outcomes of the programs, <clears throat> given we've already had an impact based on COVID. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's not as scary to me as it was in the beginning, maybe because I, I keep going to these sessions and um, thinking that it's getting better. It seems to be more left on the faculty to, to make it better um, for the students. I think so. And I, you know, I agree with all you said. And I also think it, it gives the students a chance to own, you know, some of this too. I, I think our students, they struggle some, you know, like, okay, I, I, all of this knowledge, and then how do I take the next step, you know, to analyze and, and synthesize the data? Like, I, I find myself saying to students a lot, I'll never ask you knowledge on the exam. That's what you had your prereqs for, was for knowledge. What I'm asking you now is, okay, nurse, what is the priority? You know, what is the best option for what you have, all this data that you gather, right? That makes you different. <laughs> that makes you the professional nurse. And I, I think with all of us thinking in this way, it just helps us um, to help our students be better nurses. And overall, it helps healthcare for sure. Saw something in the chat. Comments about ATI and other similar um, testing that they seem to do not seem to support the preparation for the NCLEX. Is there any correlation between these commercial tests and the NCLEX? And it's, that's an interesting um, question to Dr. With Dr. DeWitty. I've heard uh, similar things for sure, and I think part of it is that the testing companies they haven't been able to catch up as quickly with the information. I think it's hitting all of us on all cylinders at the same time. And so just like we're having to adapt um, and flex, you know, how we, um, this material, I think these companies are having to do the same. Um, we won't know if there's any correlation until the first students, those first scores come in after April 1st, that whether um, some of the work that the ATIs, the HESIs, um, the Kaplan, some of the Elseviers, you know, if what they've added um, will increase in CLEX uh, scores. So I think that's to be continued and to be researched and rated and evaluated and validated again. So that, that's a great question. Thank you. All of them are great questions. Any other? I, I will say the other, just talking about um, next gen, I guess over this last year, um, first with those other 14 um, trainers, and then as I'm going out to the different schools to talk about it, one thing is clear, I think, that we're all on the same wavelength, and that's helpful no matter what school, what type of school. I think we're all thinking, oh my goodness, what is this going to be? But I, as we're talking about it and massaging and you know, looking at how we present this material um, to our students, I think we're all um, better for it. What percent of the test will include next gen questions? I know I don't have the percentage on top of my head right now. I know it's a small percentage is not a large. I, I want to say 15, but I'm not totally sure. But I can get that um, question and get it answered. Just wrote myself a note. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions? I, I will have? Say, I'm sorry. I was going to say too, I have talked with some simulation faculty um, as well. So they're looking at how they can um, better their, their debrief or add some of this clinical judgment to the whole process and a debrief. And I'm talking with some clinical faculty 
And they're saying, wow, I post-conference, all right, I can, I can do something. Instead of just getting the one article that sometimes faculty will do, now we're really dissecting these articles using this clinical judgment. So, you know, those are just some of the ways I'm hearing people start to think about how to add this in, these concepts in, excuse me. Yeah, I would I would think that the um, that the clinical setting would probably offer a real dynamic real time learning and thinking experience for students. And, you know, because when the students are in the environment and, you know, they're really working with the with patients, um, then being able to think about um, the care that they're giving and then the process they went through, the thought process, the critical thinking um, would be a real opportunity to reinforce a lot of this kind of uh, approach and help them to, you know, um, be able to see this in, in a real way so mm -hmm. they understand what the questions are asking and then that, that application part of it, I think is gonna be so critical. Because you know, it's one thing to be, you know, uh, you know, writing something paper and pencil, but when it's you know right in front of you and you're dealing with it and you have to you have to address it, I think that's when that's when the rubber really hits the road. For sure. Yeah. I agree, and I, I'm just looking at the chat too. Um, is there a clinical judgment template as a resource? There is. Yeah. You know, I, I was thinking too. You know, one thing we teach students about is care plans, and they hate doing them. And some of our faculty hate reading them. And then when our students work with uh, nurses out in the in the practical world for clinical, they say, "Oh, no one does care plans anymore." And I always say to the students, yeah, because you've done so many care plans, you're going through that nursing process. It's like nothing to you, right? It's that muscle that you've developed. And I think, you know, this will also help us to develop our muscles further um, as we're analyzing, you know, we're synthesizing, but also we're making these decisions that can be critical to people's lives. So I'm excited for it and what will come. And then of course, you know, those who want to do the research studies and, <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. The family was excited, I hung out with you guys yesterday. <laughs> what a way to spend Monday morning. Well, yes, absolutely. And this is Linda from FAMU. You know, we have, um, I say we are coming out of the gate running because we can't afford to <laughs> not accelerate the pace. So, um, you know, it's been a, um, I think the faculty are actually, the more we have these um, faculty seminars and we have immersed or we are continuing to immerse ourselves in just the engine discussion, they're feeling a lot more like, okay, we've got this, you know, we've got a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work you know, getting the students to transition on the board because the students are thinking differently, like someone mentioned, uh, mentioned earlier. Do we get that partial credit for answers? Um, that's not, I mean, in a town hall, in our town hall uh, meeting, um, the students ask that question. And um, well, the, you know, so we, we are having similar discussions with faculty and students and having quite a bit of um, supportive um, resources to help us um, navigate um, this new um, world of NGN. So we have a couple, we have been fortunate to have, of course, Monica presented for us yesterday, and we have um, had two series from N NCSBN. Jason um, has been supporting us, and then we have an in-person presentation um, all happening before April, and that in-person is from API. So, so we'll see how it goes, and we are um, definitely willing to share. Um, on our side, what's going well. Thank you. So we're all hitting the gas. 
<laughs> and we're going. <laughs> oh, hey, Professor Dale from Lincoln, I see you. <laughs> um, sorry, I was late. Um, we have, we've been using, and I don't know if you spoke about this previously, um, sorry, I'm late again, um, but we have a care plan that actually, I'm looking at my, my um, computer over here, mm -hmm. that speaks to the clinical judgment model, and it ha it's laid out, and I can share, I can send it to you, mm -hmm. um, Monica, and then you, if you feel like it's something that it would be uh, advantageous to others, you can pass it along. It's nothing that is copyrighted or anything like that. So um, it might be a help uh, since I heard you speaking about care plans. And this helps to hone in more on the clinical judgment um, uh, ideas that you know, you know, you're prioritizing, you're analyzing and things like that and taking action. So. Thank you. I love all this exchange of knowledge and information, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're all in this together. I think, I think, yeah, just my last slide is just my contact information. So certainly um, you can email me, no problem. You know, however, I can help. I did send some resources um, to Jasmine as well to send out to everyone. And I think, I know I saw a question to ask about the clinical judgment template as a resource. I think that's in that packet, but I will double check it. And if not, I do have a um, resource I can send to everyone as well. So thank you. Thank you for sharing. Sure. Yes, thank you. And I can, um, I'll share all the resources that were given to me today, as well as Monica's contact information. Um, as I mentioned earlier, she is one of our NCLEX trainers. So if you're interested in reaching out to her to have your own session, maybe with your faculty, um, please do so. We also have several other NCLEX trainers um, that I'm working with my comms team. Hopefully soon we can actually, the page will be live, but um, we have a contact uh, document that I'll send out with all of these resources as well. So we have about um, maybe I would say maybe 12 or 13 so active trainers right now who's actually accepting training opportunities so um, if Monica's busy you know we have a few we have a few others that you can tap into um, and we're hoping that for the remaining months that we'll either highlight a trainer or we also have Jason Schwartz from NCSBN who's also agreed to give some training so once we um, identify some dates with him we can also feature him as well so we're just going to focus on the NCLEX and make sure um, that everyone just feels comfortable or is able to ask any questions. Um, if there is topics or things you would like for us to dive deeper in, please let us know and we can try to find someone, either one of our NCLEX trainers or whoever else to kind of give that presentation. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're um, adapting to whatever your needs are up until the release of that exam. And even after, once you get some feedback from students, um, we can continue to revisit this topic um, just so that way you all have the support that you need. Great, so any other questions while we have Monica <laughs> or anything that is running through your head? If not, you know, of course I won't hold you, but just wanted to make sure that we gave you the opportunity to ask any questions that you might want to. Um, Jasmine, I was wondering, I know today we have uh, many new faces who mm -hmm. have joined us. And I was just wondering maybe if everyone could just say their name and the uh, and the School of Nursing that they're from. It's so, it's so great to see so many of you with us today. And I'd like to know who you are and where you come from. Great. Well, good, good afternoon. I'm Mel Melody Neal. I'm here at Lincoln University. I'm assistant director and an assistant um, uh, professor. Nice to meet nice you. Hi. I'm Betty Key. I'm from Shelton State Community College, and I'm the new director of nursing programs here. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Greetings. I'm Dr. Latanya Hughes with Hampton University, sitting in for Dr. Arlene Montgomery. I'm the assistant dean for the School of Nursing. Great meeting. 
Do we miss anyone else? And also, I'm just gonna, we do have two new um, members of CCNA. So um, Shanice and Geneva, they are, um, are temps with us right now and joined the team recently and will be helping out a lot with our mentoring work. So I just wanted to give them a quick shout out <laughs> if they didn't want to see. a couple me. of other people also. I think mm -hmm. Dr. Edwards Doe has not introduced herself. Yes, I am Dr. Edward Stowe from uh, FAMU School of Nursing. I'm Associate Dean here at the School of Nursing. Nice to meet you. Yeah. 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 And Dean Barksdale, I think some people may not know you. What do you mean they don't know me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Deborah Barksdale, and I'm the Dean at UNC Greensboro. And I am not new to the, the group. I've been involved since the beginning. I don't even remember when that was. Um, but I actually, on this group, I represent the NLN. Yeah. Well, I meant, you know, we have some, I think maybe new faces here that were not oh. with us before. Everybody else knows you, but the, maybe oh. some of the newer people is what I make reference to. Oh, okay. Because I was getting ready to pull a Beyonce. You must not okay. know about me. <laughs> Okay. But hello, everyone. Um, Jasmine mentioned me. This I'm Shanice Corbett. I work with Jasmine here at ARP with CCNA. Um, this is my first meeting with everyone. So thank you for letting me tune in. Yes. Thank you. And hi, everyone. I'm Geneva Badmus. Sorry, I'm having a bit of technology issues. So my camera was off, but I, I too, um, was, um, I guess, introduced by Jasmine. And so I just wanna thank everyone for this opportunity. I think this is amazing what everyone is doing. And I'm so, um, I feel honored to be part of this, uh, this team. Yes, and she's a Morgan alum. So yeah. happy to have another HBCU alum on the team. <laughs> okay. Yes, thank you. Well, since we're mentioning the, um, our school we graduated from, I actually graduated from Howard University, the real okay. HU. Oh, Lord. Oh, there goodness. it goes. That's out there now. You know, I, when you said Hampton, my cousin <laughs> attended Hampton, but I had to let you know. <laughs> I was told to be on my best behavior for this meeting. The first so meeting. I oh, want to no. witness that I've done that. No. <laughs> uh, Melissa, are you there? We, I see a name from Melissa Bellamy. Yes, she's actually one of our NCLEX trainers. Okay. Hello, my name is Melissa Bellamy. I'm actually um, a professor of practice at Morgan State University, and I graduated from Coppin State University. Um, so <laughs> I am also an NCLEX trainer, so I should be seeing you guys soon. Absolutely. And, and Dr. White, did we hear, uh, are you there? Did we hear your voice? I am here. I um, have been MIA for a little bit because we're so, so short staffed and I feel like I'm teaching 900 credits, but um, I'm from Delaware State University um, and I miss you guys tremendously, um, but I kind of snuck away today and, and nice to be back for a little bit. <laughs> Good to yes, have you. Thank you. Okay. And Hi, Jim I'm... Oh. Hi, I'm Dr. Tolson from Coppin State University. I'm the chairperson over the Baccalaureate Nursing Education Department. Hello, Ms. Bellamy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good to see you again, Dr. Tolson. Yes. And I'm nice. down here at the bottom of my screen and I see we have a Jennifer McCord. I'm Dr. McCord. I'm from Lincoln University of Missouri. I'm the department head for the Lincoln University School of Nursing. Nice to nice to have you with us. Great. And Betty Key, did we hear from you, Betty? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yes, I, I introduced myself earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Oh, there Betty. you are. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Got you now. Okay. You know, those squares move around. <laughs> okay. So that's great. Good. And just for those who are newer, um, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Jasmine Cooper. I'm the project advisor for um, the work that we're doing on mentoring and 
technical assistance in general that we provide um, HBCUs as well as Hispanic serving institutions and American Indian Alaska Native serving institutions. So welcome. Um, please continue to keep joining us. Um, outside of NCLEX preparedness, we also focus on funding. Um, we focus on the mentoring, of course, and any other topic that comes up of interest. So we're always here to offer any support that we can. We have a great team, Dr. DeWitty, Dr. Barksdale, Dr. Stamps, you know, they're always our, our advisors and, and ensure that we keep this going. So just thank you all so much for joining and hope to see your faces next month. Great, great, great. Monica, thank you again for presenting. Um, Melissa will probably present another month. So we have, we're gonna be featuring a lot of our NCLEX trainers. Um, I'm gonna share the contact list. So please reach out to them and see what their availability is. Please get that one-on-one -on -one with your faculty if they need it, if they're interested, um, please take advantage of them because they are offering these trainings pro bono um, through the um, agreement that we have with um, AARP and CCNA. So please um, you know, contact them and just get a little bit more knowledge, get a little bit more comfortable with the new test before it's released. Jasmine, I'm gonna say something and I don't know if it's a appropriate to make this okay. announcement now, but I'm going to do it anyway. Tell me be quiet and I will sit uh -oh. there. Um, <laughs> and that is, you know, I know you you, you were planning to host um, session for students and that, yes. yeah, and we had talked about when we, when you get those scheduled, uh, the possibility of maybe having a couple of students who might, um, who might uh, actually show up in the Zoom for that meeting. Uh, Jasmine was going to, uh, of course, record it and then uh, post it to the site. But if there were any students who might be interested, who want to sit in for that session, it would be good to have that student present, that student yes. presence there for the for the uh, for the Zoom, and then when it gets um, recorded and posted, then there would be real students who actually had attended. So when Jasmine sends out the announcement after she gets all the logistics work out, if you have some students who might be interested in listening in for that session, uh, Jasmine, I'm sure is going to tell you how to contact her. Absolutely. And what and what we can do. So just keep your ears open for that opportunity as well for your students. Thank you for that reminder, Dr. Woody. It's my Monday today, but yes, I'll be reaching out <laughs> and letting you know um, as soon as we have a date set up um, and if we can bring in however many students that's interested, we want that Q&A piece for students who are, you know, wanting to like pick that trainer's brain. So we really want to have that recorded. And of course, you can share that amongst your all of your classes and all of that once it goes live. So yes, we're really looking forward to that. And we'll share more once we work out all the logistics. And any other questions? I think I see some things in the chat. Um, so there's a few comments in the chat um, that we'll get to. I know someone's interested in a session for the New York Action Coalition, so we can definitely talk to some trainers about their availability. We even have a trainer that's from based out of New York. So um, Debbie, we can touch base. Um, but yeah, that's it. Great, great, great. So thank you all once again, and we will talk soon. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.